Hello everyone, David Giglio here with Ozen Engineering and in this video I will show you how to use Ansys MotorCAD to develop efficiency maps and apply duty cycles to realistically model mode operation and look at the operating points on the efficiency maps. We will also look at other maps and look at open circuit and short circuit results. In this example, go to the installation folder where MotorCAD is installed, navigate to the tutorials folder, select the BPM design traction folder and open the lab efficiency map project. This project has all the settings applied. Notice that AC loss model is selected hybrid method. So in this case, um, in the e-magnetic um, physics module, losses tab the hybrid FEA AC winding loss is selected. So going back to the lab <clears throat> physics module, with everything set up, the model is built, then in the calculations tab, these settings are applied for the drive, losses, temperature, etc. And then we have windage losses applied using an automatic calculation, and we are not including bearing losses or custom losses. In the electromagnetic tab, select the efficiency map and define the speed and current definitions for the parametric sweep for these quantities. Select Zoom's map. And then in duty cycle tab, we have selected for the auto, automotive drive cycle highway mode operation, right? Highway vehicle operation. And in the MotorCAD help manual, we have the the definitions of the different automotive drive cycles. So for highway, this is for the US region, and this is typical highway conditions under 60 miles per hour. And go, so going back now to the model with the selected auto drive cycle applied, this has the vehicle model information for the math, rolling resistance coefficient, air density, etc. Right, so this is modeling the mechanical properties of the vehicle and now we go back to so we we, we go back to electromagnetic calculate e-magnetic performance this would generate for us the efficiency map however to so here we have um show drive cycle so we're showing the operating points for the duty cycle overlaid on the efficiency map. To generate the duty cycle, we go back to the duty cycle tab, calculate duty cycle, it'll show us the duty cycle over here. So here's showing the variation of the shaft, shaft torque versus time. So the motor is accelerating and decel decelerating over time um, in under the highway operation of the of the motor. Next we go to the operating point tab and we can select the input to be input definition for the calculation of the operating point. So we're using torque as an input and defining um, the speed. So we input speed and torque and then it'll give us what the stator phase current and line current and all these um, quantities here for the output. And here we have selected lab e-magnetic coupling and transferred the operating point to the e-magnetic model. So once this lab model is solved and the oper operating points calculated, these operating points will be um, transferred to the e-magnetic model. And now go, going to the calibration tab, we can perform a short circuit test. Click calculate test performance. And then we'll get this curve here showing the green curve is the state of current and the blue curve is the breaking torque. So as, as this, in the short circuit, as the rotor is spinning 
the, the magnets on the rotor are inducing currents on the stator windings that are short circuit. And we see with increasing speed, the short circuit increases and eventually levels off to a steady value. The, the, the reason is the, the stator current is changing because of the non-linearity of the stator material. So this inductance of the winding is non-linear. So the, the winding has inductance and it's, and it's, and it's changing. And this is the, the final inductance value when the current is at, a, at its you know, maximum value, a, a short circuit value, and the, the winding is the material for the stator is saturated. And we see here that the breaking torque is produced because of the field generated in the stator winding on the short circuit is producing a field that's opposing the change in flux due to the rotor magnets. So it's applying an opposing magnetic field which is countering this magnetic flux change from the rotor and it's, this results in a breaking effect on the rotor. Then we could go to the open circuit selection here, run calculate test performance and we will get this curve here which shows in the green curve the back EMF versus speed. So as the rotor is rotating, the EMF is building up linearly, and this is open circuit. And the blue curve here is the drag torque, which is basically a mechanical resistive torque opposing the motion. So the e-magnetic torque or the, or the, the, the shaft torque, right? The shaft torque is the total torque, e-magnetic torque minus any resistive torque. Initially, the, there's just two regions. So there's initially the rate of change of torque with respect to speed is higher than the region after after this region on the left, that it takes um, less shaft torque to make a given change in speed in the rotor. So the rate of change of shaft torque with respect to speed is less after the rotor is moving, after it's rotating. So initially, there is resistive forces um, you know, that need to be overcome. Resistive, resistive torque needs to be overcome to get the rotor in motion. And once the rotor is in motion, it takes less torque to develop more speed. Let's go back to the efficiency map shown before. So here in this map, shaft torque along the y-axis and speed along the x-axis are the inputs, and the output is the efficiency shown along the z-axis represented by this color legend. So we see where efficiency is maximum, where it's less, and where it's minimum. We, by selecting the drop-down menu for the z-axis, we can select a different quantity to show along this z-axis, such as the stator couple losses AC, we can see the, the iron losses of the stator, etc. We can also select on the tools tab, select saturation and loss maps, select calculate saturation and loss maps, and it'll bring us another map where we can choose the different X and Y quantities and choose uh, an output along the z-axis. So here, phase advance is along the y-axis, stator current phase peak is, is along the x-axis. These are inputs, and the output is a flux leakage along the d-axis. That is all for this video. Contact us to learn our, about our simulation capability and request a demonstration for us to show you how we can help you with your engineering projects. Ozone Engineering Inc. is an ancillary channel partner and we provide training to use ANSYS tools, offer consulting services, and sell ANSYS software packages. Thank you very much. Like this video, like it, subscribe, share. Thank you very much. Have